So this is a package I received. It comes from a viewer named Hamza in Germany. As you can see, it's a little Casio keyboard. Hamza found it at a flea market. Let's try it out. It can only make four different sounds. Oh, that one's actually pretty nice. That one's kind of harsh. It even has a little beatbox. Kind of funny, but I doubt I'll ever use the beats. The voices, on the other hand, I quite like. So I definitely want to make a sample library out of this. Of course, I could just stick a microphone up to the speaker, and I will do that, but I also want to capture the raw sound using the headphone jack. Unfortunately, there isn't one. So let's open this thing up and see if we can add one. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the inside. All the sounds are produced by this chip right here. Adding a headphone jack is probably the simplest modification you can do. These are the jacks I plan to use. I try to use this type because they have a little switch built in, which disconnects the speaker when you plug a cable in. It's very slick. I've decided I'm going to put the headphone jack in this corner here. It's just about the only place where there's room to put a hole. Instead of drilling, I'm just going to burn the plastic with the tip of my soldering iron. You can't see it, but I've actually got a fan blowing just out of frame. That should help disperse some of these toxic fumes I'm generating. Okay, that looks pretty good. Time to solder the jack. Okay, now that we've got the headphone jack installed, let's hear the raw sound from this thing. Very different sounding. Much more treble. I guess a huge part of this thing's sound comes from that little speaker. Okay, let's try this thing out with effects. The first two pedals I'm trying are Habit by Chase Bliss and The Microcosm by Hologram. As often happens with these pedals, I completely lose track of time. What was supposed to be a short segment of my video turns into 56 minutes of ambient soundscapes. Sometimes it sounds like a sci-fi soundtrack, or an orchestra tuning up in the distance. Other times it's more like a broken video game system. I'm going to disconnect the microcosm for a bit so I can focus on the habit pedal. That's pretty cool. The pedal is introducing echoes, but the echoes are pitch bent up by an octave. I'm going to record this, and then I'm going to see if I can play a lead melody on top of it. And for the lead melody, instead of using the habit, I'm going to switch to the mood pedal, which has really nice reverb. It's funny, no matter how much modern technology I introduce, the music I make with this little keyboard always seems to sound like it's from the late 70s. All in all, I really like this thing. Like many people, I had a Casio keyboard as a kid, and like many kids, over time I grew to hate it. I wonder what makes this thing feel so different. Since I'd like to know a little bit more about how this thing works, I'm reaching out to David Vienne of Plogue Software. David has been tirelessly reverse engineering the sound chips in various video game systems. He produced the Chip Sounds VST plugin, which is an extremely faithful emulation of 15 of those sound chips. Anyway, he turned out to be exactly the right person to reach out to. He had not one, but two Casio PT-10s in his collection. While we chatted, he opened one up and sent me photos for comparison. He also pointed me to this extremely helpful page, which explains, among other things, that my PT-10 uses the same chip as the legendary Casio VL1. If you don't know what that is, there's a lot of lore surrounding that tiny synth. It was one of the first ever Casio keyboards, and it's been used in countless hits over the years. The VL1 was released in 1979, which makes it strange that it actually has more features than this synth, which was released eight years later in 1987. Anyway, to answer my own question, the chip in the PT-10 generates its sound by combining various pulse waves, so it's actually a pretty simple architecture. 
This kind of also answers my other question about what makes this keyboard so different from the Casio I grew up with. At some point in the 80s, Casio switched away from the pulse wave synthesis that this uses and started using samples instead. The one I had as a kid was from 1991, and it had over 100 samples. But because of technical limitations, the samples were extremely short and they often didn't sound too much like the instruments they were supposed to mimic. But you could tell they were supposed to, which kind of made it cheesier. This instrument doesn't really fall into that trap. Because the sounds are so basic, so elemental, I find myself just using it as a synthesizer without any pretense of mimicking an acoustic instrument. The only things that I find really frustrating about this keyboard are its limited range and the fact that you can only play one note at a time. Of course, these are both things that I can rectify by sampling it. Since the raw sound from this thing is quite trebly, I want to try to record it with something that's going to mellow that out a little bit. Specifically, this Dictaphone by Intertronic. Intertronic is the house brand of Interdiscount, which is kind of like the Radio Shack of Switzerland. Anyway, I've got the output jack from the keyboard going into the input jack on the microcassette recorder. Now I'm just going to record a bunch of notes from this keyboard into the microcassette recorder. Okay, now that I've got some notes recorded, I'm going to plug the output from the microcassette recorder into my computer. And then I'm just going to play the notes from the microcassette recorder into my computer. I'm doing this because I'm hoping that the microcassette recorder is going to introduce some nice warbly artifacts into the sound. I've now recorded this into Reaper. I'm going to use Isotope RX to try to get rid of some of that tape hiss from the microcassette recorder. As you can imagine, the hiss is actually pretty substantial. And I'm just gonna do a very simple chopping, which I'm gonna speed through because it really doesn't make for the most exciting video content. And here's the resulting decent sampler instrument which we've created. In the end, I ended up sampling all four voices. I recorded them both with the dictaphone, which I think helped a lot, as well as just by holding a mic up to the speaker. Here's what the speaker sounds like. Let's try to mix the two. I'm really happy with how the library came out. I think the micro cassette recorder adds a lot of character to the sound. Also, since the PT-10 is monophonic and it has a very limited range, it's really nice to be able to use those sounds but not have those limitations. By the way, these samples are actually available for free. In order to use them, you'll need to download the Decent Sampler plugin, which is also free. If you enjoyed this video, it would be great if you could hit like. And if you haven't already, now is a great time to subscribe. I've got many, many videos in the works. By the way, there's a completely different expanded version of the Casio PT-10 sample set available on Patreon. I ran the keyboard through a range of different boutique pedals with, I think, very cool results. So definitely check that out. Speaking of which, the Patreon is just five bucks and every month or so I release a brand new set of samples just for patrons. And if you use the same email address on Patreon as you do for Decent Samples, you can actually download the Patreon samples right from within Decent Sampler, which is very handy. I do it myself all the time. Okay, I think that's it. See you soon.